Anya Hart here. Thank you for joining us on Hollywood Live. Hey everybody, welcome to Hollywood Live. We've got a great show for you today. Uh, this is Tanya Hart, of course. My guest are the documentary filmmakers that brought you that fabulous piece on Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Well, they are back with another one. It's called My Name is Polly Murray. Say hello to Julie Cohen and Betsy West. How are you, ladies? We're great. great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay, first of all, why don't we know who Polly Murray is? You know, Polly Murray is probably one of the most influential people that many people have not heard of. Uh, that may be because of racism or sexism, or it may just be that Polly Murray was so far ahead of the times that people couldn't quite keep up with Polly. You know, Polly was doing legal things and activist uh, activism often long before these areas were being popularly reached. Um, Paul, uh, Polly came up with the idea that Ruth Bader Ginsburg later used that the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Law uh, Clause could be used to secure uh, gender equality as well as racial equality. Uh, Polly's ideas were also influential in Thurgood Marshall's legal work. Uh, mm -hmm. Polly was arrested in 1940 um, for sitting in the front of a, of a bus 15 years before Rosa Parks. Pa Polly was desegregating restaurants in Washington, D.C. in 1943. Like at every turn, Polly was just years or even decades ahead of the curve. Yeah, she really was. I had the pleasure of meeting her because when I started my career, I started it in Boston and she was at Brandeis. Oh my wow. goodness. That and is one of so the, cool. It is. One of the first interviews I ever did was with her. So I can truly appreciate what you're talking about. Wow. Um, she she was a force and she was older than she was only there. She was about to leave when I when I came to Boston. But yeah, she was uh, she was she was quite the lady. You know, it's interesting because we have these people in our history and we don't know about them. And they had such a great influence. And it was actually the Ruth Bader Ginsburg documentary that you guys were doing when you discovered her. How, tell me that story. Yeah, I mean, Ruth Bader Ginsburg put Polly Murray's name on the front cover of the first uh, gender discrimination case that uh, Ginsburg was presenting before the Supreme Court. And so this was really not because Polly had been a co-author, but as a nod to Polly's ideas about how to win uh, equality for American women. So that was really what we knew. Here was this African-American lawyer, legal scholar, somebody that RBG admired and had relied on. But then we, after the documentary came out, we did a little research and it didn't take long to discover this extraordinary life that spanned so many accomplishments, so many chapters. And that's when we thought we really should do a documentary about this person. I know. And, and you know, the interesting thing is she was she was a, a, a gay woman. Um, and I think she called herself queer back in the days. I'm not really sure what people were how you were referred to then. But that in itself, do you think that that's part of the reason that she was not really recognized? I mean, this woman became the first Episcopal priest, by the way, in America. I mean, there's so many things that she did, you know, like you, it, it, it's like, but, but do you think it was really the gender equality piece that perhaps left her out of history until now? So, yes, I mean, Polly in life um, loved women and actually had a long term meaningful partnership with um, Irene Barlow. Um, Polly also was gender nonconforming and going back to, uh, you know, uh, around 1940 was asking doctors, might it be possible for me to get testosterone or for there to be some kind of gender confirming surgery for me at a time when there was no language for transgender or non-binary person. Those words literally weren't in our vocabulary yet. Certainly that might have had an impact on the extent to which Polly is not more widely known, both because Polly was keeping a slightly lower po profile sometimes for fear of these um, facts coming into the public eye, and because uh, of people's phobias that kept them from being able to appreciate somebody who was a bit nonconforming in so many ways, uh, you know, gender nonconforming among them. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you know, you guys have some great footage in there too. I mean, I love all of the old footage. I don't know where you got all that stuff. I'm like, where did they find this? Where did you oh, find all that stuff? We got a lot of good stuff from Polly, frankly, who had saved everything. So a lot of the photos that you see from the 1930s and 40s, Polly riding the rails, taking a camera, taking pictures, having pictures taken of Polly. I mean, that was pretty extraordinary. And then the audio tapes that were in the Schlesinger Library every time Polly was interviewed by someone. And I'm surprised, yes. I mean, you know, maybe we have something from you. Polly often would we make a recording record. and then save it because I think Polly had a pretty good sense of their place in history, understood that they had lived an extraordinary life and that future generations would want to hear about this story. Exactly. I'm going to see if I can find it, something in the Schlesinger Library that she, yeah, she may have. Lot. I'm telling you, this was like, you know, way back in the early 70s. So wow. who knows? Th this is airing. Uh, we're, we're, tell me about the documentary, where it's airing, where people can find it. Yeah. So um, this film, My Name is Polly Murray, is going to open in theaters across the country on September 17th. And then we'll be on Amazon Prime on October 1st. Um, we are extremely excited about the prospect of more people learning Polly Murray's story and just sort of the conversation growing and continuing about this extraordinary historical figure. Oh, she's she really was a force to be reckoned with. And I'm so glad you've done this. And, you know, there are just so many stories like this that people don't really know. But what would you say to the audience about the reason that they need to watch this, particularly at this time in our history? Well, I do you, what you've just said there that we are having a kind of reconsideration of the history that we've been taught and there's a new new understanding that it's not exactly the way it's been presented Polly murray's story is just one of many people who've been ignored uh, by academia not necessarily by uh scholars in the academy who have in the past couple of decades been talking about Polly murray but more generally we need to have a shifting of the focus on people like Polly, on the role of systemic racism in our country. There are many areas that, uh, you know, it's, it's time for a change. It really is. Well, Julie and Betsy, thank you so much for bringing this story to life. I mean, it's quite incredible. I would encourage everybody to watch it, bring the family. Every, it's a good family story, especially. And it, it, it's great to spark discussions on this right now. So it's not a black story, it's not a white story, it's an American story. 